It's Thursday, July 6th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski with today's Connecticut news, including a murder-suicide investigation in Bridgeport. Later in the show, we preview the front pages of our community newspapers this week with our editorial director, John Kovach. Frank Rita will also have a look at your forecast and later on a Nutmeg Sports update. And Donald Eng will take a look back on this day in history. But first, two people were found dead Wednesday in a Bridgeport apartment in the Trumbull Gardens complex. The Connecticut Post reports that Police Captain Roderick Porter said a sergeant patrolling in the area was flagged down around 7. Porter said when the sergeant went into the apartment, he found multiple deceased individuals. The sergeant called more officers to the scene and alerted the detective bureau. Preliminary reports on the scene indicated that the incident appeared to be a murder-suicide. Identities of the victims were not disclosed. Porter said the medical examiner will conduct an investigation to give official word on the causes of death. He confirmed a family member lived in the apartment but did not disclose how many members of the family were there. As part of the department's procedure for a situation like this, Porter said the department is looking into whether or not police have gone to the apartment in the past for any reported incidents. The department will also obtain a warrant to fully search that apartment. And in other news, a Shelton man was arrested for his alleged role in the robbery of a buck stop gas station with a fake gun on Wednesday, July 5th. Shelton police arrested 34-year-old Ross Kane of Shelton and charged him with first-degree robbery as well as possession of an imitation firearm for his alleged role in that crime. Now, Kane's arrest stems from a report of a gas station being robbed by a suspect with a firearm approximately eight hours earlier that day. According to a statement by Shelton Detective Chris Nugent, the employee at the gas station called Shelton Police, also wrote the license plate of the suspect's vehicle down as it fled the scene. Nugent said that officers on the scene confirmed the vehicle was stolen from a rental car agency in West Haven over the holiday weekend. Detectives following up on the robbery searched hotels in the area and surrounding towns, and approximately two hours after responding to the robbery, detectives located that stolen vehicle parked at the Quality Suites Hotel on South Avenue in Stratford. With the assistance of the Stratford Police Department, Shelton detectives set up surveillance on that parking lot and stopped the stolen vehicles that attempted to leave. The driver of the vehicle was identified as Kane, who was subsequently taken into custody. And two men are in custody after a dispute over a wallet nearly led to an armed confrontation on Independence Day. According to reports, Trumbull police received a 911 call shortly after 9 in the morning on Tuesday, reporting a man with a gun in his hand running on Leonard Place. A nearby officer stopped 25-year-old Rashan Jimenez of Bridgeport in his car and located a loaded handgun on the passenger seat. Jimenez allegedly told police he had been chasing a man who stole his wallet while holding the gun. Jimenez said he had met an acquaintance on the street and after an unspecified dispute, the other man grabbed Jimenez's wallet and ran off with it. Police determined the gun was registered and Jimenez had a valid pistol permit. Trouble police requested assistance from a Fairfield police dog and located the second man, later identified as 19-year-old Jordan Elian of Trumbull, sitting in a vehicle in front of his Deerfield Drive home. Elian was identified as Jimenez as the acquaintance that took the wallet. Elian was arrested for theft of the wallet. However, despite a search, police were not able to locate the wallet. Police are continuing to investigate the nature of the relationship between the two men, including what led up to that alleged dispute. And in New Canaan, a Porsche was stolen and thieves took items from vehicles of 10 residents late Monday night or early Tuesday morning, July 3rd or 4th. All of the cars were reported to have been unlocked at the time and there was no forced entry. Now, New Canaan Police Lieutenant Jason Ferraro said this is a frustrating crime for the police department because it's truly preventable. He said people continue to ignore our warnings and fail to take our advice on removing valuables as well as not leaving keys in the car and locking your doors. Now, New Canaan streets where the thefts occurred were Elm Street, Greystone Circle, Marshall Ridge Road, Richmond Hill Road, Sunrise Avenue, and West Hills Road. Items taken from the unlocked cars consisted of wallets, cash, cell phones, and other miscellaneous items. Now, the stolen Porsche was recovered Tuesday evening in Bridgeport, according to police. Ferraro said that investigators are looking into surveillance video at the places where stolen credit cards were used in Bridgeport. 
And a Darien woman was charged with failure to halt possession of liquor by a minor after an underage drinking party was held at her home. Officers were dispatched to Mansfield Avenue at about 10.30 at night on June 27th after a report from the department's anonymous tip line. Now an officer approaching the area could hear loud music coming from the home in question and saw several taxi services leaving the front of the home. As officers pulled into the driveway, five youths were seen running away from the house and another two tried to walk down Mansfield Avenue. The officer, noticing that both were clearly intoxicated, instructed them back to the home and told them to have a parent come to the scene to pick them up as police met with the owner of the home, Deborah McLaren. Now, McLaren said she had just thrown an 18th birthday party for her daughter, which had started at 6 in the evening. The party had begun with about 20 of her friends, but more people began arriving later. She said she had been home for the duration of the party and had come outside to check on things several times during the evening. McLaren told Darianne Police she wasn't aware of any alcohol being consumed until about 9.30, at which point she claimed she ended the party and told everyone to go home. However, when questioned by a second officer, McLaren said she became aware of the alcohol at 10.30 at night. Based on the level of intoxication displayed by the teens, officers concluded that they had been drinking for an extended amount of time. While searching outside the home, officers found a table and cup set up for beer pong next to the pool and several empty containers of alcohol in a garbage bag. McLaren told police there was no additional partygoers at the house, but during a walkthrough, officers found five more teen girls in bedrooms. McLaren claimed she did not know where all the kids were since they had started running. According to police, McLaren's daughter had fled the home when officers arrived. And there's more on that story at DarianTimes.com. And in other news, former Wilton Miller Driscoll School paraprofessional Eric Von Cohorn refused to testify in any substantial way when questioned by attorneys representing the plaintiffs and defendants in the case of Girl Doe versus the Wilton Board of Education. Now, Von Cohorn was questioned June 5th at the Carl Robinson Correctional Institution in Enfield by Paul Slager, who represents the plaintiffs, known as the Doe family, and Thomas Garardi, who represents the town of Wilton and its Board of Education. The Doe family is suing the town and Board of Ed, alleging Von Cohorn took their daughter, a preschool student at Miller Driscoll, to the bathroom alone and sexually molested her. Now, to nearly every question he was asked, aside from his name, address, date of birth, and social security number, he cited his Fifth Amendment right not to answer in order to avoid self-incrimination. Slager also asked <clears throat> Von Cohorn about an alleged incident which is said to have taken place in December of 2012, but he refused to answer. Von Cohorn also refused to answer questions regarding a boy whose family is also suing the town and school, claiming he was molested and photographed by Von Cohorn while a student at Miller Driscoll. Slager represents the boy and his family and as well. <clears throat> now, according to the Wilton Bulletin, in this lawsuit, a trial management conference is scheduled for October 18th, with jury selection scheduled for November 1st. Now, we're going to switch gears now. Sorry, throw it over to Frank Granito for a look at the forecast. We'll get back to that news story later. Thank you, Kate. And it's a little cooler out today. We're seeing temperatures sitting in the low to mid-70s. We're currently looking at mostly cloudy skies. There is a possibility for some periods of sunshine on the way in the early afternoon. We're going to see increasing cloud cover again later in the day, along with a possible passing shower or two. Overcast skies will continue overnight, and we could see a shower and thunderstorm before Friday morning. Overnight rain continues into early Friday morning. Conditions should be dry, though, by the afternoon, but still overcast with cloud cover and a lot of humidity as we will kick off our coverage from New Canaan's Grip It and Rip It Passing Tournament. Skies will start to clear up overnight with a low of 63, but there could be some more rain back on the way Saturday along with some hot conditions. Temperatures are back up into the 90s and it is going to be very humid again. Partly cloudy skies through the first half of the day and we could see passing showers early and later in the afternoon, but mostly clear skies overnight. Temperatures falling back into the mid-60s before what should be a sun-filled Sunday around Fairfield County. That's going to do it for this weather update. Let's go back over to Kate. Thanks so much, Frank. Well, we are going to step out for a break, and when we come back, Donald Ang will take a look back on this day in history. Frank has your Nutmeg Sports update, and there's more local news coming up after this.
celebrate summer with fresh made-to-order picnic boxes from Walter Stewart's Market. We have delicious summery selections from buttermilk fried chicken to grilled lemon chicken kebab, grilled shrimp Caesar salad wraps, or lobster salad rolls. Our easy-to-carry picnic boxes come with your choice of a meal, as well as a dessert, beverage, and utensils. Order online for simple pickup options. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, New Canaan, and online at stewartsmarket.com. Did you know heart attacks and strokes are the leading cause of death in America? Protect the health of you and your loved ones. Talk to a doctor about heart disease. Hi, I'm Dr. David Pazer with ProHealth Physicians, encouraging you to stay informed about health matters that affect you. ProHealth Physicians is on the pulse of social media to share information about health and nutrition with the community. Get up-to-the-minute alerts, including ProHealth Physicians news and upcoming events. Connecticut's leading group of primary care doctors is just a click away. I can't believe it. Well, Dad, you did it. You sold 160 cars. Ready to go back upstairs now? I think it's time. I wonder how the boys are making out in their new office. Not what I had in mind, Kyle. What, Dad? Maybe we should retire. Right now, lease a 2017 Rogue S for only $139 a month. Isn't, Isn't it time, time you got, got Millerized? If you've ever thought about owning a motor coach or learning about what it's like to travel the open road in superior style and comfort, then contact Dave's RV Center in Danbury, Connecticut. Offering the best quality Class A motorhomes from Newmar, travel trailers and fifth wheel lines from Surveyor, and a toy hauler line from Work and Play. Choose from Newmar's Gas Line, Base Star, and Canyon Star, or from Newmar's Diesel Line, Ventana, and Dutch Star. And with unparalleled service and maintenance, Dave's RV is committed to keeping you and your motor coach safely on the road and enjoying it to the fullest. Stop by their showroom, 2 Industrial Plaza Road, Danbury, Connecticut, or call 877-483-3866. If you want a new experience in car buying? Step Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram with one of the largest inventories of new two- and four-door Wranglers. We are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Come visit our new Ram Truck Center. Browse our websites, scapchryslerjeep.com or scapdodge.net to find the new Jeep, Chrysler Dodge car, minivan, or Ram truck you've been looking for. Just two miles from both I-95 or the Merritt Parkway exit 44. Save thousands right now at the Summer Clearance Event. Going on now through July 31st. If you're watching this broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached more than 2 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Welcome back to this July 6th edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. Time to take a look back on this day in history with our own Donald Ang. Don. Well, Kate, a, uh, a long but not very distant, a very distant but not very long journey began 20 years ago today. Uh, first, though, we go to 1535. Sir Thomas More executed for treason after refusing to acknowledge King Henry VIII's supremacy over the church in England. Now, Henry had demanded that More swear an oath recognizing him as supreme in, and I quote, this realm and all others. And when More refused, he was executed by beheading for Catholics. He is venerated as Saint Thomas More, uh, the patron saint of, of all things, statesmen and politicians. 1885, Louis Pasteur successfully tests his vaccine against rabies on Joseph Meister, a nine-year-old boy who had been mauled by a rabid dog. Pasteur had harvested rabies from infected rabbits, then weakened the virus by drying it for five days. Now, had the vaccine not worked, he could have been prosecuted for practicing medicine without a medical license. It didn't, though. Meister lived 55 more years. 1917, a hundred years ago today in World War I, Arabian troops led by T.E. Lawrence, that is Lawrence of Arabia, and uh, Ada Abu Tayyi capture the city of Aqaba from the Ottoman Empire during the Arab Revolt. Now, the screenplay for the movie, by the way, is based on Lawrence's memoirs, about 400,000 words worth of them, which he wrote from memory nine years later. Finally, now we go back to 1997, 20 years ago today, and it looks like a lot more than that based on the graphics. Check this out. Where we go. They're going to plan for the first seven days to be able to go up to 10 meters away from the lander area. The next two months, they'll try to go out even further. And if they're lucky and have everything work properly for the two months, they'll try to go for one year in which they'll go out even further. 
Wow. So they could, um, they can't plot. I mean, on the, on the surface of Mars, this is a Martian globe that you have brought in. Show us in general where the landing zone is. Oh, fantastic visuals there. The Mars Sojourner rover deploys today from the Pathfinder landing craft on Mars. It would explore the surface of the red planet for the next month, covering nearly 100 yards. The name, in case you're wondering, was chosen based on a NASA essay contest, and it was submitted by a Connecticut 12-year-old who suggested the name in tribute to the abolitionist and women's rights advocate Sojourner Truth, who in 1828 had become the first black woman to win a legal case against a white man when she successfully sued to regain her son, who had been sold into slavery in Alabama. Truth is listed by Smithsonian as one of the most 100 most influential people in American history. That is your look back in history for today. July 6, and I'm Donald Ng. All right, thanks so much, Don. Well, in other local news, Norwalk detectives are investigating a car theft that occurred outside the family market at 72 Taylor Avenue back on June 4th. Yesterday, they released surveillance photos from the scene. Now, the pictured suspect stole a vehicle that was unlocked and running outside of the market. Anyone that can identify the mail or has any information about the crime is asked to contact detectives at 203 854-3191. Now, anonymous tips can be left at 203-854-3111. All right, let's throw it back over to Frank Granito for a Nutmeg Sports Update. Frank. Thank you, Kate. And New Canaan lacrosse's Drew Morris and Ryan O'Connell helped the North overcome the South 18-16 in the annual Under Armour All-America lacrosse game Saturday night in Towns in Maryland, along with the help of Ryan's Ryan Cornell and Arden Cohen of Darianne. The South led 6-4 early in the second quarter when O'Connell scored unassisted to cut the deficit to one goal. That ignited a 4-0 run, which put the North up for good at that moment in time, 8-6. After the scout South scored to make it 8-7, the North closed the first half with five straight goals, giving them a 13-7 advantage at the break. Morris started in goal for the North, playing the entire first half. He had 11 saves, seven of which came in the first quarter. He was relieved by Ryan Cornell, who made four saves and would secure the win. O'Connell had the one goal and the one ground ball. Arden Cohen doing a great job defensively as well, helping out both Morris and Cornell. And don't forget that we will be live tomorrow from New Canaan High School for the 2017 Grip It and Rip It Passing Tournament. Seven FCX schools will be in action in the 16-team field. Friday's pool play will be from 1 until 8 o'clock. The HAN Network is on the air 2 to 3. We'll have interviews with players and coaches and other members of the media. And we are back again on Saturday for the double elimination tournament play. 12 to 2.30 is when we are on the air bringing you action from the quarterfinals, semifinals, and the championship game. Again, that is at New Canaan's Dunning Field. That's going to do it for this Nutmeg Sports Update. Let's send it back over to Kate. All right. Thanks so much, Frank. Well, due to the work on an at-grade railroad crossing on Long Ridge Road in Redding beginning on Friday, there will be no train service on the branch line between Danbury and Norwalk on Saturday and Sunday, July 8th and 9th. Now, alternate bus service will be provided and those schedules will be posted online at mta.info. Train service is expected to resume on Monday. But due to the work being done by the State Department of Transportation, Long Ridge Road in Redding will be closed at the crossing beginning at 10 a.m. July 7th until Wednesday. Wednesday, July 12th at 4 p.m. Signs will indicate a detour for motorists and work will be confined to that area of the crossing. Now, in other news, a landmark in Reading, the Reading Roadhouse, has again closed its doors. The bar, restaurant, and event venue at 406 Reading Road is owned by Kate Wright, who also owns the Reading Ridge Market and Deli on Black Rock Turnpike. Wright plans to continue running, running Reading Ridge. Wright said she's closing Reading Roadhouse because she can no longer keep up with both businesses. Her late husband, Jordan, who ran the businesses with her, passed away from cancer in November at the age of 40. The couple has a one-year-old daughter daughter named Autumn. Closing the roadhouse was a decision we all had to make together, Wright said, referring to herself and Jordan's family. Now, the Reading Roadhouse, which is a 5,500 square feet and seats 275, was open seven days a week and hosted live music from local bands on the weekends. You can get a lot more on that story at the ReadingPilot.com. 
And the Monroe Volunteer Fire Department will be hosting evenings filled with cotton candy and Ferris wheels during the annual Fireman's Carnival. Now, the carnival is running now through July 8th from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. each night. The carnival is held to raise funds to use uh, used by the Monroe Volunteer Fire Department. Monroe Volunteer Firefighters first hosted that carnival back in 1923 to raise funds to purchase their first fire truck, making it one of the oldest traditions in town. The carnival is held at the intersection of Routes 110 and 111. Seward Amusements will be operating a large number of carnival rides and games, and all the traditional carnival food and snacks will be available. There will also be a large selection of rides designed for younger children as well, but you can get more details at MonroeCourier.com. We're going to step out for a break. When we come back, John Kovach joins me to preview our front pages this week after this. Want a new experience in car buying? No aggravation, no confrontation, just answers to all your questions. Scap Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, car buying the way you want it to be. With one of the largest selections of new two and four door Jeep Wranglers available, we are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Located in Fairfield, Connecticut, we're easy to get to. Just two and a half miles off the Merritt Parkway, exit 44 via Route 58 South. Save thousands right now at the summer clearance event. Going on now through July 31st. You don't have to go far for authentic Neapolitan cuisine and renowned wood fire pizza. Pizzeria Loretano of Bethel is a contemporary Italian bistro specializing in authentic wood fired brick oven pizza Napolitana. Pizzeria Loretano was named one of America's top 1,000 Italian restaurants in 2008 by Zagat and recommended by Jane and Michael Stern on National Public Radio's Splendid Table. Located close to the Bethel Cinema, we focus on quality and our food is always made to order. Join us for live jazz Sundays from 6 to 8. Find our schedule, menu, and more at PizzeriaLoretano.com and like us on Facebook. At InSports Trumbull, the game is always on inside. Registration is now open for our fitness training programs for high school athletes. The InSports Performance Center is offering blast speed classes, athletic functional movement assessments, and both men's and women's elite speed and strength training. Our premier programs help bring athletes to the next level. Call 203-268-1214 for more information. Like and follow us on Facebook. School's out, the weather is hot, and the fish are biting. Whether you're heading to the beach or out on a boat, stop in at the dock shop before you go to fill your beach bag or tackle box with everything you'll need for fun in the sun. A new beach cover-up, some sunscreen, or just some bait, the dock shop has you covered from either location. 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport. And yes, you heard that right. Bait is now available in Darien and Westport. The dock shop. 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, DocShop.com. I'm Tracy Masella, a licensed clinical social worker at Silver Hill Hospital in New Canaan. Join me each month as we talk with experts on the front lines of the treatment of mental health and addiction. Straight Talk with Tracy, a Silver Hill Hospital production, airs at 12 p.m. on the second Thursday of each month here on the HAN Network. All right, welcome back to this Thursday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm joined now by our Editorial Director, John Kovach, to preview our front pages this week. John, what are you looking at first? Lots of fireworks this week, Kate, and they weren't all for the 4th of July, as we see in Stratford. Melvin Mason has video up on that. Still no budget. They had another meeting last night. It continues. Interesting times in Stratford. Adding now to the political intrigue, in the 4th District, the ex-wife of the incumbent plans to challenge him for wow. that seat. The Shakespeare Academy, which is on the grounds of the historic Shakespeare Theater, has begun its latest season. And some great shots of fireworks over Stratford. Just a beautiful venue there. All right. Well, I'm taking a look at the Monroe Courier. Uh, the superintendent reflecting on his time in Monroe, so kind of an in-depth story on that. Also, EMS honoring volunteers and a search and rescue dog, Emma, who's just adorable, is retiring. And now I also want to mention goat yoga. This is a craze you're kind of seeing pop up everywhere. Uh, Tina Marie Craven went to one of these classes. I actually attended uh, this class, a, goat yoga a blue at Blue Lotus Yoga, yes, and I will say the goats were very adorable. I don't know how much yoga you're really getting done, but you know they are jumping on your back, eating your hair, that whole thing. So it's a lot of fun. It's so, very fun. It's good for the soul. 
Like yoga is supposed to be. And I you suppose. won't get wet like you would doing paddleboard yoga, <laughs> yes. which we featured last exactly, week. Exactly, exactly. So, goat yoga. Unless they pee on you, which is possible. Um, anyway. You said that, I did. All right, what are you looking at I'm now? I'm in Weston, and Brian Hafley just takes awesome photos at events like this. He got such a great fireworks shot and, and a great shot of a little girl there. Uh, story on what to do in Weston this summer. One thing you need to do is be careful about ticks as the state has found levels are high. A Military Excellent Award to Seaman Recruit Margot Witter of Weston and an auction of items from Keith Richards. And that's $100,000. That goes to two Ridgefield nonprofits, Sphere and the Prospector Theater. All right, taking a look at the Trumbull Times this week to petitioners seeking to return seven, vo seven voting districts to Trumbull. This has been an ongoing dispute for a while, so there's more on that. Uh, and also, the Center for Family Justice bringing hope to traumatized children. Children who have suffered through domestic or sexual abuse will get a chance to enjoy a week of therapeutic camp under a new program being offered by the center. Trumbull residents pay 11th most income tax in Fairfield County. More on that. And also that four Former Board of Ed Chairman in Trumbull and State Board of Education member uh, Stephen Wright getting sentenced to some jail time in one of his DUI cases. And the DOT planning a Nichols Avenue upgrade in Trumbull. Darien has one of those events that's just pure Americana, and that is the push-pull parade. And it's kids with wagons and bikes and ride-on vehicles and whatever. Uh, parading on the 4th of July, just a great event there in addition to some fireworks photos. Uh, update on the state budget, which we still lack. Hearings on the commons at Neroten Heights development are expected to close Tuesday, and work has begun on the Darien High Stadium, where lights are going in. You'll see the first mm. photos of that on the front page of the Darien Times. All right, taking a look at the Milford Mirror now, a local group pushing for acknowledgement of a Milford icon, uh, Doris Gagnon. And you can see some old photos of Doris at the Silver Sand State Park at the boardwalk there. Uh, they really just want her honored by the city, so great story. Housing law awaits approval in Milford, and the Connecticut Autobahn names a new director. And we also have some news in brief this week, including a new law assistant principal and new principal at East Shore. Looks like the grand finale on the cover of the Wilton Bulletin. That's quite the fireworks shot. Those uh, by Gretchen Yankst of uh, GretchenYankst.com. She also got some kids celebrating. Great. The 4th of July photos are always so enjoyable. A uh, look at success for seniors. The street fair, it's that season coming up. It's going to be in Wilton. That's going to be Saturday, July 15th. Interns are exploring Wilton's history at, with regard to slavery. Interesting story there. And a World War II intelligence officer being honored for his work. All right, taking a look at the Easton Courier. Uh, more on goat yoga because those goats are, in fact, from Easton, so they traveled to Monroe for that class. Also, part one. Never too far to go for a good <laughs> exercise class. Exactly. Uh, federal climate stance sparking some local activism in Easton. More on that. Uh, also, officials approved curve signs for local roads. We talked about this last week. Some residents are really upset about some new road signs in Easton, and the DOT basically defending itself and saying, hey, this was approved locally, not by us. Lots I think of officials. Pointing. Yeah, lots, lots of pointing, pointing going, going on. on in that. And summertime mood calls for some farm fresh food. So cool story there. Uh, tick numbers high statewide as the Shelton Herald reports. Adorable photo of a dog that Dylan Haviland took at the Shelton Derby dueling fireworks. I gotta go to that sometime. Just seems like a very cool idea. Uh, discussions of an underground brook that flows through downtown Shelton, how it might affect uh, a proposed development there, a look at summer pet safety and another adorable dog shot, and a local artist made a painting of the musician a Little Yachty. <laughs> little Yachty just loved. I can loved. hear you say that all day. <laughs> little Yachty just loved, but he delivered. It's a very cool story, though, that he it did is. the painting. 
shared it on Twitter, and the subject contacted me. Hey, they're a really cool painting. I'd like to have that. It's pretty neat. It's a very cool story. All right, we'll take a look at the Reading pilot. Some beautiful photos uh, by Brian Hayfully of uh, Reading celebrating its 250th. Uh, the town has cannon fire, fireworks, live music. It was just a great event. And there's some beautiful photos of that. Also, granny pods could be coming soon. Something being discussed uh, by Reading zoning enforcement officer. Implementation of a new law created in regard to temporary health care structures. Reading also a site for a tick study. And who makes the best pies in Reading? Well, you'll just have to read the story and find out. It's kind of a cute story. I read. <laughs> If you want to see uh, just the scope of the 4th of July celebration in New Canaan is evident in a Greg Riley photo on the cover of the New Canaan Advertiser. And the story behind that is New Canaan did a celebration for the Bicentennial back in 1976. And everybody's reaction was, wow, that was a really great event. We should do that every year. And, and that's what it's become. And it's it's really just a, a, a gathering every year in Waveney Park. So some great photos of that. Mm -hmm. A parent and two children arrested after a youth party in Ponus Ridge and a story you just brought us, Kate, about uh, thefts from and of a vehicle in New Canaan. All unlocked vehicles. All right. unlocked vehicles. With valuables inside. All right, well, taking a look at the Richfield Press. This is why local news is great. I just have to read this lead. In light of Richfield's ongoing dog poop situation, a seven-member town committee, including First Selectman Rudy Marconi, has formed with the sole purpose of resolving the smelly issue. It's getting real in Richfield. <laughs> it's getting real. So more on that. Uh, also, uh, possibly some townhouse units on the former Schlumberger property. Again, tick numbers are high in the state and locally. A Peaceable Alliance aims to change zoning rules. Uh, and Jesse Lee sends record number of volunteers south for an Appalachian service project. Our Arts and Leisure section looks at the, pre pre uh, the first major production by Throne Stones Theater, and that is the U.S. premiere of Milk and Shrimp as a savory Ooh. summer treat by the twins, Judy and Joy. That looks really good. All right. Well, before we wrap things up here on Coffee Break, what's coming up on Yankee Fisherman at 1 o'clock today? You know, fishing brings families together, and we're going to look at that in a couple of different ways. We're going to talk to Doug Thurston, who memorializes his late father through Big Doug's Memorial Saltwater Shootout. We're going to talk to Doug about that benefit for the shoreline, soup kitchens and pantries, and get a look at some really hot action not far from the shore. And then we're going to talk to Stephanie Griffith aboard the Middle Bank 2 as they get ready to host the second all-women's fishing charter coming up. All right, very cool. That coming up at 1 o'clock, Nutmeg Sports at 2 o'clock. And we're going to wrap things up here. We're going to be coming at you live from Dunning Field in New Canaan tomorrow as we get ready for Grip It and Rip It, right, John? Can't wait. All right. Football in the summer. Let's Excited do it. Excited about that. All right, so we'll see you tomorrow at 11 for your coffee break. Have a great day.